everybody, Carl Shook here from Snorkel.tv, and today I'm excited to finish up our series on Timeline Max Bulletproof Transitions. And today we're going to be building on the last transition we did, which was the reverse out, and we're going to add the option for a custom animation out. So here you'll notice that once this section has built, if I go to About, you'll see that the animation out is sort of customized. It's no longer just the reverse of the in animation. If I go to Portfolio, About flips around. Once Portfolio is built, if I go to Blog, Custom Animation Out. Um, and once I'm in Blog, if I go somewhere else, it scales and fades out. Um, what we stopped with last time was just the ability to, when a section was building, to reverse it out. Reverse it out. So here we're going to play forward because the section's already built. And if we go back to portfolio, I'm sorry, we can reverse out now. Okay, so it's a little bit of both. If the if a section is building and we select a new section, then we're going to reverse the current build. Once the section is already built, then we'll have the option to smoothly play a custom forward out animation. Okay, so we're going to show you how we're going to build this. Okay, um, you guys have been here for two other techniques, so you're familiar with my file already, which is a quick refresher. Uh, the main thing that drives this whole um, technique is that we have these labels in our timeline. We have home in, and then once we've introduced all the home elements, we go have home complete, and that's where the playhead stops. And what we're going to do here is say, hey, if we have built the entire animation, then we're going to tween forward and play this customized out animation here instead of doing a reverse. So let's go over to my example timeline file. And again, this is what we're going to be doing. So here we have the Flash IDE version of a section building, stopping, and then fading out and going to the next section. So we use the same type of labels here as just illustration purposes. And what I'm going to do here is say, if the playhead is coming in, and I detect that the next frame doesn't start with underscore in, then I'm going to reverse the timeline and jump to the requested sections in label. And so let's just say I'm at blog complete, all right? The section is fully built. I'm gonna then say, hey, you know what? If someone requests something else, I'm gonna see, hey, you know what? There's an in label ahead of me, so I'm gonna play until I get there and then I'm going to jump to maybe the about section and play its in section. So we're always going to have this very smooth transition. If home is coming in, we're going to rewind it and then jump somewhere else. If home is already built, then I'm going to say it's okay to move forward until the next section's in label, and then we'll jump to maybe portfolio in and tween away. Okay, so that's the basic concept, and we'll be going over this quite a bit. So in my start file, we're going to be starting off virtually where we left off with the reverse out transition, which means that we always play the reverse of the in transition. So every time I go to a new section, it's the exact opposite of it building. If I go to portfolio, everything's going to fall down there. Okay, But we're going to say, hey, you know what? We're going to have now a custom out animation if we're already at the starting point of an animation being fully built. So in order to do this, we have to detect whether or not we're going to be playing forward or backwards. And the whole detection is based on the names of our labels. If I'm at home complete, the next label is going to start with an in. If I'm at blog complete, the next label has an underscore in in it. Okay, that's the whole basis of this. So let's go to my file. And now we're going to ask that question. Before we do any sort of transition, we're going to figure out what's the next label in the timeline. Okay, so let's go into our code here. And we have our nav click handler that does all the moving around for us. And let's just comment this out right now. This was our rewind function that we used last time. And every time I click, I'm going to trace out the next label. So I'm going to tell the timeline to call its get label after method. Okay. And that's going to tell me what's the next label in the timeline. So if I test the Swift out and hit portfolio, it says home complete is the next label. 
Well, that's because I clicked the button while that home animation was building. If I click blog again, it tells me the next label is blog underscore in. Okay, so I'm at the end of home. The next in label is blog in. If I hit about, the next label is blog in. So what I want to do is play the animation between home complete and then blog in before I jump to my next section. All right, but I also, you know, right now I'm just tracing what the next label is, but I also want to find out whether or not it contains the word under, or I'm sorry, the string underscore in. So I'm going to use dot index of, and watch this, and we're going to say underscore in. This is how we search for a particular string inside of another string. So when I do it really quick the first time around, you'll see I get negative one. That's Flash's way of telling me that that string does not exist. There was no underscore in in the first label that it encountered. But now that we're at home complete, the next label is blog underscore in. So clicking any button is going to give me something like uh, four here. So that tells me that the, the term underscore in did show up at an index of four um, in the next label. And why is it four? Because when it analyzes the label, which comes next, which is blog in, we have characters zero, one, two, three, and then at the fourth position here, that's where it found the underscore in. All right, so we know that if index of in of underscore in is negative one, that means it doesn't exist. So that means that the next label is not the next section's in label. So we're gonna use that in a little bit of conditional logic here. So I've got that trace in there. No longer am I going to trace that out, but I'm gonna say if the next label does not <clears throat> return negative one, not equal to negative one, or I could say if it's greater than negative one, okay? That means that it exists somewhere. So that means the next label contains an in. I'm going to then do something. And what I'm gonna do right now is trace go forward. So let's test this out. If I click real quick, it says about. It doesn't say go forward. If I click now, it will say, hey, go forward. <clears throat> because once that animation is done, it knows I will need to go forward. Um, I can also say else, and this will be important, I'm gonna trace out, go back. Okay, so if I click while it's building, it says, hey, go back. We need to do a reverse tween. Once it's built and I click on blog, it's gonna say go forward. So that means that I can accurately detect what the next label is and whether or not it contains that underscore in string. So now that I know that that works, there's one place it doesn't work. Well, we can't show that quite yet. Um, let's go out and build this. So once I know that I can go forward here, I'm gonna tell my timeline to tween to the next label. So I'm going to say, hey, TL, why don't you tween to um, TL dot get label after. Okay, and then when you're done doing that, we're going to call an on completes function, which is going to be introduce target section. And this is the same function we used last time when we were done with our reverse tween. Then we said, hey, okay, we've reversed the current section, now introduce the next section. And you can get a little refresher of that in my tip number two for reverse out. Just to show you what this code literally means, I'm going to go back to my example file. Where are you? And just to see it right here. So if we're at home complete, the next label is blog in. So we're going to say, okay, play forward in time until you get to blog in, and then you're going to go to whatever section you requested and play its animation in. Okay, Our else statement is going to say, hey, if the playhead is somewhere between home in and home complete, the next label does not contain underscore in, so that means we'll play backwards really quick and then jump to the next sections in. So right now, 
we should be able to tween forward. And let's use the right file here, our start file. Check it out, this is awesome. This is fully built. The next label from home is blog in. So if I click on about, we're gonna fade out and then jump to about. There is no more of that reverse. If I go to blog, oh, there's my error. Cannot access a property or method of a null object reference. Let's go to blog, it won't happen. Once I'm in about, this whole thing blows up. And it's very important that you see that. Um, and this is the error that I couldn't reproduce earlier. And the whole reason for this, let's look one more time, is that I can go to blog once I'm built. Okay. Once it's built, I can go to portfolio. No problem. I can go back to home. No problem. If I go to about, no problem. But when I go to a leave about, that's when my error comes up. It says, can't do anything. You did something wrong. Well, the reason here is that when I'm in about and I ask for get label after, the problem is that there isn't a label after. So let's go into my actions and you'll see all the way down we have blog complete, then we have portfolio in, we have about in, about complete, and then we have the about tween out animation here, but nothing's happened. There's no label after that. So in order for this to be truly bulletproof, I need to say, hey, let's add another label. And this is sort of a dummy label. I'm just going to call it end underscore in. And we'll add it at tl dot uh, duration. That puts it right at the end of the timeline. And in my example file here, the fake flash timeline, you'll see that this is analogous to saying, hey, if I'm out at about complete, well, there is no next label here either. So I could add a keyframe there, and then in my properties panel, we could, you know, obviously say that frame is going to be called end in. <clears throat> so then, if I'm in the about section, about complete, it's going to ask me, okay, let's just, so you can see it, if I'm at about complete, I can tween to end in, which gives me the sequence of about moving out, and then I can jump to whatever section was requested. So let's just test this real fast. Should work just fine. Wait for something to build and then go to about. And then we go to about. And now if I go to blog, about fades out and blog comes in. All right, so pretty much bulletproof. Now the only problem here is this. If I'm waiting for portfolio to build and I go to blog, we're busted right now because I just detected, hey, you should go back, all right? but there's nowhere to go back to. Let's go to home, okay? Let's go to portfolio while it's building. It's detecting, hey, you need to go back. Well, I never put my go back animation in there. So now what I can do is scroll down all the way to my master logic function here, and we're gonna say, hey, once we decide that we need to go back, well, that's when we want to <clears throat> put our reverse code in. And again, this reverse code was used in the last example. So we'll just cut it out, and there we go. So this is what it takes to decide whether or not we should play forwards or back in our timeline. We analyze the next label in our timeline. If it contains an underscore in, then we're going to play through to the next section's in, which is really the current section's out animation. And when it's done, the new section comes in. If that index of in doesn't show up, then we're going to say rewind. Okay. So now we can go both ways. So once something's built, custom animation out, which is really just that fade out. So every section now just fades out. We started really simple. But since blah portfolio wasn't fully built, it played backwards. About's coming in, nope, I'll reverse you out. I'll reverse you out. Wait for home to come in, nope, I'll reverse you out. But if I wait for home to build, you guys have seen this a few times, now I have my custom out, which is just a fade out. Now it's time to say, all right, I want to have better animations than just the current section fading out. This is where we can customize everything. So really quick, home in. This is how home builds. All these tweens right here. And this is how home tweens out. And what I can do is while I'm fading it, I'm going to say, you know what, rotation um, x is going to go to 90. 
and that's it really. So let's test this out. There we go. So it just flipped up. Go back to home. Simple 3D tween. Now what I like doing with this tween also is while it's flipping up, we're also going to move the Y value down. So I'll say Y is going to be somewhere around 250. And then we're also going to say, all right, after blog complete. So between complete and portfolio in, this is where we have our custom blog out animation. So for blog, we're just going to say uh, scale X to 2, scale Y to 2. Um, and maybe we'll change the uh, X value to be like a negative 100 pixels. We'll just move it over a little bit. So let's test these two right now. So once home has built, you'll see that it drops down like that. When I get out of blog, it scales up a little bit quickly. Um, for portfolio, we're going to blast out doing all two, but I'll copy and paste that. Let's go to about. So right now about fades out. And we can just do this. So for our about out animation, right where we have that alpha zero there, I'm going to do a rotation y 90 degrees and we'll change the x value to be uh, what are you going to be 450 sounds good to me okay so now about doesn't need to fade out it can fly away like that and so you can get really creative with all of these um, go to blog we'll rewind home because it wasn't fully built and for portfolio, we do a little all too. So I'm just going to copy and paste and cheat a little bit here for you guys. So let's go to portfolio where we have all those different clips that come in. And we're just going to do this. All right. We're going to do an all two that takes all those clips and fades them out. And then we're also going to take the whole parent clip and alpha it out. So here, portfolio has that really nice custom animation out. Wait for it to build. And there it goes. So go from about to somewhere else, custom. Welcome, I can rewind you. Or if home was fully built, you'll see that it has its custom out animation. And this thing is just bulletproof, folks. I can click, 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 and it always knows where to end. Portfolio blah, portfolio blah, portfolio blah, blah, blah. And there you go. So there's the bulletproof series, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if this is the first video you're watching, please go back to the beginning and watch the teaser overview. And then also, uh, if you watch each of the steps through, everything I did in this step should be fairly straightforward. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.